Hi, this is David from Mash IT. Today, finally, we could be doing the review of the uh, Metalfish S3 uh, small ITX PC case. This little bad boy here. Now, unfortunately, this has taken quite a while for us to be able to do this review because we bought this case with a Metalfish uh, Flex PSU 400 watt, and upon testing that PSU, it lasted a grand total of about 10 minutes before it exploded. So we've now had to get ourselves a replacement PSU so that we could actually do this review. So let's have a look at the components we're going to be using for this review today. The replacement Flex power supply that we've received is the Enhance 7660B uh, 600 watt power supply. This is like, pretty much known as the best flex uh, power supply on the market. It runs pretty quietly and it seems to do pretty well. We've got the Azus Strix. Uh, this is the B3, no, H370i ITX motherboard. Um, it's a little bit older now, uh, but perfect for what we're going to be doing for this PC. It did come with a shroud covering this section here, but I did take that off on my previous build because in the K39, I couldn't fit um, a Blackridge cooler and it was such a crowded case, it got in the way of the PSU as well. So I've ripped that off and I'm going to leave it off for this build too, just for a bit of added space. We're going to be using a Noctua L9i. Uh, heat sink. Now this is probably one of the best heat sinks for this size of case. Uh, the only problem with the S3 over things like the K39 is you don't have a great deal of headroom for the heat sink. So this is probably one of the best heat sinks that you can get in this case. We're putting in 16 gigabytes of uh, Vengeance DDR4 3000 megahertz RAM that I had lying around. A 500 gigabyte Samsung um, M.2 SSD. We've got an Intel i5-9400F. The reason we've chosen this processor is it's quite cheap for this sort of a build. Uh, it's six cores but with no hyper-threading and it runs pretty cool. So in order, I don't want this machine to be particularly loud, so with this CPU and this uh, cooler, it should work pretty well. So most games will still play fine, but it won't be like a jet engine. And lastly, we've got our Gigabyte uh, 2060 mini. This is a perfect card for this case. It's only 170 millimeters long, uh, reasonably powerful, a 2060. Obviously the new cards are on the way, but I'm sure they're gonna be way too big to fit in a case like this for the time being. So this is kind of, I think, one of the best that we've got to offer for this case. There are some 2070s out there, but I'm struggling to get one in the UK at the moment. So I think that's everything. So let's start the build.
any life. Oh, here we go. Hoping there might be an operating system on this SSD. But let's just go into BIOS for a second. Right, I can hear the system's reasonably quite on idle. It should all be set up. So I don't know if you can see the power button. I'll zoom in in a second, but uh, it's got a white ring around it. I think it's flashing, yeah, it looks like it's flashing white red, white to red when the hard drive is being accessed. System is reasonably quiet and idle. I've got a Noctua fan on the N9i and the Gigabyte fan's not particularly noisy and it has fan stop as well. I can hear the fan in the enhanced power supply and the top fan as well. They're not annoying, they've just got a bit of a, a, a cheap fan rumble to them. If you're used to Noctua's you'll, you'll understand what I mean when comparing them to other fans. So what I'm going to quickly do is run a couple of tests just to see what the fan noise is like, see what the thermals are like and then we're going to have a quick summary of this case. Now it's actually put together I'm pretty happy with how the case looks. Uh, the fit and finish could be a lot better. There are some visible sort of gaps around the sort of the seams where they don't quite line up but it does feel very solid. It feels more solid than the K39 that I was using. The K39 was actually easier to build in even though it's a slightly smaller case which really surprised me. Uh, but the K39, I don't know, it's a little bit fatter uh, but not as tall and wide and it's just made it a little bit easier to hide the cables in there. Now with this one, uh, if I decide to keep it and use it, what I will be doing is put a Noctua fan in the top to get rid of that grumble and probably I'll put a Noctua fan in the power supply. And I will also, I think I will um, take away some of the cables I'm not using on the PSU because there's a lot at the moment with this Enhance that I bought because I couldn't get modular. There's a lot of spare cables rattling around in this tiny little case. What we're going to do now is we're going to run uh, Intel Extreme Tune Utility, the stress test. I'm also, let's just make that a bit bigger so you can hopefully see it, going to run uh, Unigen Heaven just so that you can see the sort of the temperatures. Uh, and what we'll do, well, I'm going to run a decibel meter. Let's take that off full screen. I'm going to put that on the Extreme Benchmark. Let that run. So there we go, you can see that's off there. Should be nice and clear on the screen, I hope. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Uh, 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 uh. So CPU temps, GPU temps. Here we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put CPU stress test. 15 minutes, let's start that testing. So you can see that will max out the CPU and the Unigen will be maxing out the GPU. Right, so I can hear the fans spinning up, mostly the graphics card at the moment. As you can see, the fans are ramping up. I'm hoping you can hear that, sorry. And the um, temperatures, they're quite nice in the 60s for the moment. I've not undervolted anything, this is pure stock settings, stock fan profiles. I'm going to let this run a little bit longer and then I'm going to do a decibel meter reading. You can hear the GPU fan is slowly ramping up a little bit. So with that undervolt, the CPU is now up into the 70s. GPU seems pretty stable. Obviously, if this is you know, a long-term rig, I would undervolt both the GPU and the CPU. And when the uh, CPU is in the late 70s, I can hear the Noctua fan spinning up a bit. Again, this is something that I will tweak in BIOS as well, but this is just pure out of the, out of the box experience. Right, 
I'm going to put the microphone near the case so hopefully you get an idea of what it sounds like. And let me grab my phone and I'll get a Despo reading. So it's in the 40 decibel range, uh, about three foot away. It does sound quite loud, it sounds louder than a, a machine at 40 decibels. I think it's the pitch of the GPU fan. Certainly not bad. And with a bit of tweaking, I think you can get the temps down quite a lot. So to summarize this case, I would say build quality wise, this is the case of it was about a, a 30 pound, 30 dollar case. What you're basically paying for is the fact that these are probably made in you know, low quantities and it is a very small case. It's quite a bespoke market. Sorry, quite a niche market. But once I put the thing together after my initial disappointment with the power supply blowing up and Airline Express being completely rubbish with helping me uh, deal with that, that put a sour taste in my mouth. And then putting this thing together, the initial build quality wasn't great. But once I've got all my components into the machine and it's up and running, it's actually quite a solid little unit. And it's actually a lot more solid than the K39. Um, I definitely would recommend this case, but I definitely wouldn't recommend you buy the PSU with it. I'd recommend you go and get a decent flex PSU from either Enhance. And I think um, there's another other couple of good companies out there. I'll try and link them down below in the comments section. But the nice features of this case is the USB at the front, that's quite handy. That's just one at the top, but that's you know can be quite useful if you want to plug in a thumb drive. Also, having a fan at the top really helps, but I would recommend ripping out the, the fan that they provide and putting in a decent 92mm Noctua. Uh, be a little bit of mod in doing that because obviously it comes with an 80mm fan, but it's it's quite an easy job by the looks of it. And you need to think about the components that you're putting in this case. I've got a 2060 and a i5 9400F in here um, and it's definitely quite audible. If you're quite comfortable with that whilst you're gaming then that's absolutely fine you could probably even go for like higher components because there's no problems cooling it. It just does get quite noisy. So either you've got to undervolt everything and, and bring the temperatures down that way or carefully choose the components you're going to buy for this case maybe a, a 1660 um, or, a, or a quad core processor or a, a lower power uh, Ryzen processor, the 3400G or some of the newer 4000 series that are out next month. But all in all, a great case. Um, I think I still prefer my K39, but you know, if you're choosing between the two, I think you know you can't go wrong with either. They're both nice and small, chuck them in a bag, very compact, they're great for that. But I don't think it's worth the money that ALI Express are charging for it. So you've got to decide, you know, is this really the case that you want, you know, for the size. I think that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Any questions, put them down in the comments below. And subscribe for our further videos. Uh, we've got more ITX cases coming up shortly.